Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, Labor supports this, uh, the Carter Observatory Amendment Bill. The purpose of the bill being to just establish the Carter Observatory as the national observatory. It repeals the Carter Observatory Act 1938 and, that, uh, and dissolves the Carter Observatory's board. It also vests the assets and liabilities of the observatory in the Wellington City Council. Um, since 2007, the Wellington City Council has been effectively managing the, the Carter Observatory. The Council has agreed to take uh, full responsibility for the Carter Observatory to which the Crown agrees, and the Bill gives effect, as I've said, to that agreement by repealing the, the Carter Observatory Act 1938, dissolving the Carter Observatory Board, uh, providing for the transfer of the assets, including land of the Carter Observatory uh, Board to the Wellington City Council, Council, vesting in the Crown the liabilities incurred by the Carter Observatory Board prior to 20th of December. Uh, 2007, investing in the Wellington City Council the liabilities incurred by the Carter Observatory Board on or after the 20th of December 2007. The Carter's uh, name commemorates Charles Rooking Carter, who gifted his estate to the Royal Society of New Zealand <coughs> uh, to establish an astronomical observatory in Wellington. Parliament established established the Carter Observatory in 1937 and opened its doors in uh, 1941. Carter became a base for astro uh, astronomical research in New Zealand. Work began with solar investigations and when new staff joined during the 1970s, it expanded to include variable stars, galaxies and asteroids. Carter Observatory became New Zealand's national observatory in 1977. In 2005, the New Zealand Government commissioned Professor Mike uh, Bessel to review Carter and to, uh, the Carter Observatory and explore New Zealand's requirements and opportunities in astronomy uh, and space science research and education. Professor Bessel's report kick-started the Carter Observatory's transformation into a world-class visitor attraction uh, and education facility. <coughs> in 2006, the Labor government provided $2.2 million to, pro to provide more educational and tourist opportunities at the Carter Observatory and in 2008 further funds were provided in line with the tourism strategy at the time. And, and tourism and education are both uh, spokesperson roles that I have uh, and it's great that the, the Carter Observatory is included, uh, adds to the, to the wealth of tourism uh, uh, opportunities within the, the Wellington city area and of course education uh, has been is, uh, close to my heart. When I was a, a teacher I had taken uh, groups down to the One Tree Hill Observatory there and uh, the kids are really uh, enjoy and they get really involved in the opportunities that observatories uh, have, especially going down at night and observing the stars and the moon and so on. And there are difficulties with having an observatory in the city in that uh, they work best when they're not surrounded by, by street lights and, uh, and, uh, and or lighting that actually affects the, the images that they, that they can get. In 2005, I was lucky enough to travel to Arizona and uh, part of the, the trip over there, I, I went up, I think it was Mount Williams. There's an observatory at the top of that mountain, 10,000 feet high. Uh, and despite the fact that this observatory was in the middle of the desert with just a few towns uh, 20 or 30 miles away, uh, the, the lights from those small towns still distorted the images that the, uh, and, and the views from the, from the telescopes. Uh, in particular, Phoenix, uh, the city of Phoenix and the city of Tucson, which were a couple of hundred kilometres away, still managed to distort uh, the, the light from those cities was, was visible on the images. So it's not good to have an observatory uh, that's going, that, that is really serious about research and science being, being smack bang in the middle of a city, uh, in particular a city like uh, Wellington that, uh, with its inclement weather and cloudy days, it, uh, there'd be a number of nights when the, um, when the, when the views wouldn't have, would have, wouldn't have been very good at all. Um, <clears throat> The, the space, the education program in, includes um, some fantastic opportunities. There's curriculum link teaching resources sent to schools before visits um, that offer uh, astronomy information, lesson plans and activities and, and links for further research. 
There's uh, members of the Carter's learning team help teachers tailor programs to meet their group's uh, learning objectives. There's free familiarisation visits for teachers. Um, the students are able to explore interactive multimedia exhibitions, and these encompass four themes. Space, time and matter is the first theme. The second theme is stars, solar systems and planets. The third theme is life in the universe, and the fourth is astronomy of Oceania. Um, there's opportunities to view and handle significant astronomical artefacts, heritage telescopes and historic documentation which was shipped over here in, during World War II. Um, when the viewing conditions are right, students are able to use the Cook telescope to view the sun under controlled conditions. And there's optional hands-on workshops led by the, the Carter Learning Team. There's also a planetarium where uh, the kids get to sit under the stars. Um, and Mr Speaker, it's it, when I was going to school some 25 or so years ago, uh, uh, some uh, 10 to 15 years ago, the Matariki, was, the Matariki Festival was almost unheard of, and uh, it's great now that Matariki has become quite a, a, a big event in the Māori calendar, and it's great that the Carter Observatory um, uh, reinforces that and emphasises that on between the 14th of June and the 18th of July, they're celebrating Matariki, which is the, um, the rising of Matariki, heralds the start of the Māori calendar year. And, and like many other civilizations, the changing shape of the moon was used to mark months and the individual days in this period. Each day of the, the Maramataka, or the Māori calendar, had a name and associated shape. If the moon could not be seen for a number of these days, then it was easy to count off these days or catch up when the moon could be seen. As the lunar calendar does not ma match the solar calendar, the dawn rising on Matariki heralded the changing of the year with the first new moon after the rising, uh, um, commencing the start of the, the Maramataka. So it's, it's great that the Carter Observatory is reinforcing in its educational programs this whole, the, the whole Matariki concept and it's acknowledging uh, the, the, these Māori concepts. So I'd like to congratulate them there. As well as tourism uh, facilities, as well as educational facilities, there's also conference facilities at the, at the Carter Observatory, and we can see that it's moved right away from the, the whole research program that it, it had. So it really is uh, only right that because it's, it's no longer suitable in its use as a, as a research centre, it's um, appropriately been converted to support educational and tourism purposes. Um, and uh, it's appropriate that the, the facility is, and the assets are being vested and transferred over to the ownership of the, of the Wellington City Council. So as I say, Mr Speaker, the Labour Party does uh, support this, this legislation. Thank you very much.